Okay, fault trees. If you have ever worked with logic gates, you already know how fault trees work, and you can probably skip to the next video. Probably. If you don't know how those, how, if you haven't worked that before, the good news is it, at least to me, it was really simple to catch on to this. It's just logic. So, in fault trees, you have two kinds of things. You have events and gates. It's like different kinds, but it all boils down to events and gates. The kinds of gates you have are AND gates, OR gates, and NOT gates. I was not joking when I said it is just logic. Well, logic that instead of written in this direction is written in this direction, but that'll make sense in a second. So ANDs, ORs, and NOTs. Usually not NOTs. People like keeping them simpler when they can. ANDs and ORs. Events, you have three kinds of events. The top level event, intermediate events, and basic events. When you look at a fault tree at the very top, you will have the top level event. The top level event, when it occurs, when it is true, it means something bad has happened. At the opposite end of the fault tree, at the very bottom, you will have a number of basic events. Basic events are statements, true or false statements about the thing you're looking at. I will use a microwave for an example because uh, some time ago Eric Long did a very nice paper about this and he used a microwave for an example and it works really well for this. Anyway, so bottom you have statements about the microwave. Power is on or off, uh, doors open or closed, plugged and not plugged in, timer set or not set. You get the basic idea there. In between basic events and the top level event, you will have some number of intermediate events. Intermediate events organize things, break them down in a way that is readable and logical. To determine if any given event is true or false, you look at the events below it. All events are connected through a gate. For example, using our microwave example, you will have the top level event. Underneath it, you will have have an OR gate. I, I Technically, you could use a NOT, but I've only ever seen OR gates. That'll connect to a number of other events, all of which will, if they occur, mean something bad has happened. Because if any one of those are true, that means the OR is true, that means this is true. If they're all false, well, it's logic. You know how this works. Underneath every intermediate event, you will have its own AND OR OR gate, connecting to more intermediate events. Sometimes they go directly to basic events. Normally you'll have two to three, or twenty if it's a huge tree. <laughs> so, basic event, OR gate connects to intermediate event. For our example, we'll say that that has an AND gate underneath it. So in our microwave, top level event, let's call this intermediate event, Radiation exposure. That is a safety hazard. If that occurs, you've definitely got a top-level event if people are exposed to radiation. Underneath the event, you'll have an AND gate. That AND gate will connect to two basic events. Now, in logic, you know AND gates are set off when all of the things beneath it, whether it's 2, 3, or 20, whether if those are all true. So look, look at the basic events we have here. Power on, door open. If power is on but door is shut, that means the microwave is on. That doesn't trigger an AND gate, and it's not a safety hazard. If the power is off and the door is open, you open the microwave. That doesn't set off an AND gate, and it doesn't expose anyone to radiation. If power is on, and the door is open. That sets off an AND gate and causes the event of radiation exposure, because, well, you just think about it. You get it. You, I'm sure you do. <laughs> And that will, in turn, set off the OR gate, which sets off top-level event. And this is basically how fault trees work. They have all of these conditions that cause an error, all of the things that cause those. Sometimes an event, instead of going basic to events, most of them will have a number of other events that must also occur, all of those based on their own conditions. And that's pretty much a fault tree. If you understood what I'm talking about, you got 90 plus percent of this just down. Find an example. You can read it.
Some of them have funky things of, uh, let's see, what are funky things fault trees use? Sometimes for a big one, they'll have little triangle symbols, but that just means we could not fit this here. Go to another page to see the rest of it. That's simple enough. Sometimes they'll have the same thing referred to by multiple, by multiple locations, but again, that's, it just means they each have their own little copy of it. It's not terribly complex if you understand logic. And if you got here, you're probably pretty smart, so you've already got this, or at least are smart enough that you can figure it out quickly. Really, a good source will it won't take you an hour to get this down pat. So, that's fault trees. Let's go to state machines, which are a tiny bit trickier.